Hello, I'm Roderick Snell, manager of the Pacific Horizon Investment Trust. And in this webcast, I would like to give a brief review of what has happened over the past year, including why the trust performed strongly, the changes we made to the portfolio, and our outlook for the Asia X Japan region. Now let's start with a reminder of our core philosophy. What defines us is growth. We believe Asia X Japan could be one of the fastest growing regions over the coming decades, and we strive to be invested in its fastest growing companies. It's growth multiplied by growth, or as we like to call it, growth squared. Now such an investment style was richly rewarded over the year as the COVID-19 pandemic spurred the rapid acceleration of technological adoption and unprecedented levels of economic stimulus globally. This was combined with large parts of Asia handling the crisis relatively well, allowing their economies to reopen quickly and growth to rebound sharply. This, however, was not a time to stand still. The extreme dislocations in markets afforded investors a once in a decade opportunity to buy high quality growth businesses at extremely attractive valuations. This is especially so in more cyclical industries where the trust exposure had been increasing for the past couple of years, but this accelerated significantly over the past year. And the result is a portfolio today that might surprise some. Uh, in absolute terms, our largest exposures remain focused on the key themes of the rising middle class, technology and innovation. However, we now have significant exposures to more cyclical industries, including materials, industrials and energy that are among the largest relative positions within the portfolio. There does remain, however, one commonality among all the companies held. Growth. So using Pacific Horizon's largest relative sector position, materials, as an example. Holdings here are predominantly concentrated in companies exposed to just two commodities, nickel and copper, both of which lie at the core of the green revolution. Copper, as the most cost-effective conductor or um, conductive material, sits at the heart of capturing, storing and transporting new energy sources, and demand from green sources could easily grow tenfold by 2030. Nickel, on the other hand, is a core material in electric vehicle batteries, where demand across Asia will be driven by China's intention to have electric vehicles account for a quarter of all automotive sales within the next few years. By country, uh, the most notable changes for the trust have been a substantial increase in India, which is now the largest country overweight, and we're particularly excited by what one might term New India. You see, for many years, India has had some of the most attractive companies across Asia. But often this has had more to do with the lack of competition they face rather than any great innovation or technological edge. But catalyzed by the rollout of the world's second largest 4G mobile network, allowing many Indians to access the internet for the first time, things are changing fast. And just as we experienced in China more than a decade ago, a new breed of exciting and innovative technology-focused companies is emerging across the country. Now, many of these prize businesses, however, remain private and Pacific Horizon's ability to invest into unlisted companies has been extremely beneficial. We made several investments or new investments into private Indian companies, uh, including Delivery, the country's leading delivery and e-commerce logistics business, Daily Hunt, uh, a leader in short form video apps and potentially the next TikTok of India, and Star Health, uh, India's largest private health provider. Now, a significant portion of funding for Indian companies came from the sale of our Chinese names, uh, noticeably reductions taking place to a number of the large technology companies where we had concerns over competition and increasing regulation. Uh, so the trust position in Alibaba was reduced uh, and positions in Tencent and Meituan exited. And our timing proved to be prescient. Um, the demolition of the private education sector, where we had no exposure, a crackdown on the monopolistic practices of internet giants and enhanced rules on data ownership and security led to significant falls of many leading Chinese companies. As to our long-term outlook for the region, it remains extremely positive. Uh, the rise of the Asian middle class, accelerated by technology and innovation, continues to be one of the most powerful investment opportunities of the coming decade. And as active managers with long-term time horizons, we're infused by the number of exciting growth companies we can buy that should benefit from these economic, social and technological changes across the region.